What's up guys, Will here, and today I got the new Dell XPS 15 inch with the Cabby Lake processor. It sports an i7-7700HQ, which has a 2.8 gigahertz base clock that can go up to 3.8 boost. Uh, has hyper threading on it. This model has 16 gigabytes of RAM, 512 gigabyte SSD. It has the uh, NVIDIA GTX 1050, which has some great gaming capabilities. Um, as you can see, the, the chassis is all aluminum front and back. You open it up, you can see that, that sweet monitor. Uh, you can basically tell from right here that there's no bezels on this at all really. Um, this is a 4K IGZO IPS panel, provides great viewing angles from the sides. Uh, 10 point touch screen, uh, has Gorilla Glass on it for uh, protection. The uh, color on this is 100% uh, Adobe RGB, so the color on it is really, really good. Uh, the trackpad's really nice too. Not quite Apple standards, but uh, it's uh, above the rest um, in its field. It's a glass, um, great response, nice uh, clicky feel to it. The keyboard's uh, backlit, um, not crazily backlit. There's only uh, two options in terms of how bright it can get, but uh, the typing experience on it, so it's, a, it's a nice tactile feel, not quite as good as my Razer Blade, but uh, it, it's, it provides an enjoyable uh, typing experience. So with this one, um, the cost on this is going to run you about $2,300. Um, you'd have to call into Dell, I believe, to get this because Dell's website right now is a little confusing. They only offer the 7700HQ processor with the 1080p panel which is kind of weird and you can only um, you can't do any more upgrades on it you can't upgrade the SSD but uh, if they do come out with the option of the of the processor upgrade um, you can open up the the notebook and replace the M.2 SATA um, drive and they actually have a second dim slot for RAM so you could upgrade this thing to 32 gigabytes of RAM so I've had this for a little bit I've been able to uh, Benchmark a couple games, a couple, uh, couple other benchmarks that allow me to get a, a good idea of how this would, uh, you know, work in somebody's daily life of productivity and gaming. Um, the price, $2,300, may be steep to some um, compared to other laptops that probably have more power, a better graphics card. But, I mean, this, this it, it all depends on what you want to do with this. Um, this is a, a work hour, workhorse. Uh, for productivity um, with second it can gain I mean it's not it's not the other way around so with this you're going to have good uh, battery life which I'm going to show you um, and all around a great laptop especially with that screen with no bezels um, really puts my razor blade to shame in terms of what you're looking at um, but without further ado let's uh, take a look at some benchmarks so starting off, this laptop has the GTX 1050, which is definitely a lower offering than many of the other gaming notebooks out there, but let's remember, that's not what this machine was made for. That being said, this thing can still pull some decent FPS in the most demanding games. Starting off is Unigen Heaven. You can see I try to find the sweet spot for getting the best FPS, and with this card, you are almost always going to be playing at 1080p. It's definitely not going to handle 4K titles for the most part. And here, I found that with the medium to high settings and tuning down the anti-aliasing, I achieve frame rates right under 60 FPS. This is a good start to show what the performance of the 1050 is. Moving on to 3D Mark's Firestrike, we don't see any jaw-dropping performances, but let's remember, this is not a card that you're going to buy for playing things on Ultra. Both GPU tests and physics tests show around 30 FPS, and this is a demanding benchmark, so I'm not really surprised or worried of how it scored. Okay, so on to some actual gameplay now. So one of the most demanding and beautiful games out there is The Witcher 3. As you can see, we're definitely not going to be playing this one at max settings. There's just no way. But playing around and tweaking some settings around the medium preset, you'll be able to play at 60 FPS while retaining a lot of the visual features the game offers. GTA 5 showed some great results. I got a little worried as when I put everything to high settings and with the multi-sampling anti-aliasing, I was only able to pull 25 FPS, but when I 
turn that off, I was able to pull 64 FPS on average, which is pretty surprising to me. This game relies heavily not only on the GPU, but also the CPU. So getting results like this affirms that this thing can definitely play some demanding titles. So after my last benchmarking videos, you guys wanted me to show more games. So I picked up Battlefield 1, one of the newer demanding titles out there. I was a little skeptical going in, but happy to see I was able to achieve some good frame rates. As you can see, we have to turn the settings down, but tweaking around the medium preset will allow you to achieve 60 FPS easily. This was running DX11. Battlefield 1 is also DirectX 12 compatible, so I wanted to do some benchmarks on it. Unfortunately, the software I was using, Fraps, and through further research, the Afterburner app um, showed that it just bugged out. It would crash the game. At first, I thought it was DX12, but thankfully, it was just the software. So I went into the console, got the in-game FPS monitor to show up, and I eyeballed some numbers. So it appeared when switching to DX12, I lost around 10 FPS between all settings. So like I said, take that with a grain of salt. I didn't have the benchmarking software going. But that aside, I'm pretty psyched that this card can play this title. Okay, so now we have one of my favorite games up, Overwatch. This is a title I was actually able to run at 4K and relatively easy. As you can see, I'll probably stick around a 4K high preset to get the best performance. But you can definitely see that the lower graphic demanding games like Overwatch, probably CSGO, League of Legends, and others can be played at 4K on this notebook. It goes to show that the 1050 is a great budget card. The i7-7700HQ is a great processor, and while not a huge improvement in performance over the Skylake version, we can definitely see the performance and benefits of hyperthreading, as the 8 logical cores do work in Cinebench. The GTX 1050 also scores well in the benchmark. The combo, as we have seen, can play some demanding titles, and we can also see that Dell didn't skip out on the M.2 SATA SSD, showing some great read and write speeds. I did the same test on my Razer Blade and the XPS 15 blows it out of the water. This thing is definitely fast. Moving back to the XPS hardware, taking the cover off reveals an easily accessible M.2 slot that can be easily upgraded and also you can see the two DIMM slots. While this XPS is spec'd out with 16GB of RAM, you could easily swap them out for 32GB. The heatsink also looks very familiar to me as it appears to be identical to how Razer does their uh, Razer Blade notebooks. When playing games, the laptop does become under load and those fans will kick on and they can get pretty loud. Measuring with a phone app, I reached 58 dBm, which was loud but, you know, wasn't too crazy. It's about the same as my Razer Blade. Um, when it's not under load, it, it's, it's silent. So... As you can see, the battery, I, I benchmarked the battery life with PC Mark Home Conventional Benchmark, where it goes through office tasks, web browsing, photo editing, video chat, and some casual gaming, and it got a score of 3 hours 17 minutes. That being said, I ran the screen at 4K, 50% brightness, uh, and the volume at 50%, and achieved 5.5 hours of straight up playing YouTube videos. When I turned the panel down to 1080p and the volume down to 30, I got 7 hours of constant playback of YouTube. Alrighty, the XPS 15 has a 720p camera or webcam, more like a chin cam because it's located beneath the viewing area of the um, screen. Uh, they can't put it on top due to the bezel-less uh, screen, so that's what we got to deal with. It's not too bad in quality, but like I said, I'm staring center of the screen and you're looking at my chin. And there's no so it is what it is, but it's pretty good. So guys, as we can see, this this laptop has a lot of power to it. It can play some games at 1080. It's kind of like the perfect laptop in my opinion. So what it comes down to is what is this what is it for? Um, to me, in my opinion, it's for the business person who, you know, the video editors, even me. I do IT during the day, so I would love to have this laptop to do tasks. Um, and that comes down to basically the specs and the battery life. The two other laptops that are in this class, I feel like, um, in terms of form factor, you know, the solidness of the build and just performance, are probably the MacBook Pro and the uh, Razer Blade. 
Um, but in terms of battery life, those two don't come close to this thing. Um, this thing is just awesome. And you take in effect the bezels or lack thereof. I mean, it's just an awesome uh, screen altogether. So when buying this, as I said, the Dell website doesn't have these specs. so You'd have to custom order it. Um, but even if there might be a cheaper way, as I said, when, the, when I took the panel off, it's pretty easy to upgrade the M.2 slot and the RAM. So as long as you got that, uh, as long as you got the display in the 7700HQ uh, processor, you might be better off uh, getting the cheaper end of that spec and then upgrading later um, by yourself. You know, it's pretty easy. And I should have videos if you're not comfortable with doing that. Um, I'll show you how. So basically that should be it for me. If you guys like the video, please hit that like button. If you want to see more content from me, hit that subscribe. I have a couple other videos coming up. The NVIDIA Shield review I should have uh, at the end of the next week beginning. Um, I also have my kid's $550 PC bill, which hopefully I'm going to have him actually build himself, put the components in and everything, and then we'll benchmark that. Um, I know he's pretty excited as I've hinted it towards him. Um, and I also just dropped a crap load of money on uh, stuff that hopefully will make this uh, YouTube channel better in terms of lighting. I actually bought a slider. Uh, so I'm not manually with the camera going, trying to get good B-roll because it's trashy. Um, with that being said, I will see you guys on the next one. See ya.